guys! Welcome back to Roger's Make It's Marco here, and today I'll teach you some cool tricks to paint perfect eyes. It doesn't matter if you paint hyper-realistic historical models, fantasy creatures or sci-fi aliens, a face is always the most important focal point of any figure. These days I'm painting this lovely little bust, sculpted a few years ago by Raffaele Picca. And this big, protruding guy gives me the perfect opportunity to record a detailed step by step about this vital topic. I have a lot of footage of this paint job, so if you are interested I can easily make a full step by step about this creepy dude. Let me know in the comments! Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to always know what happens on the channel! And if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page and join the community! The tendency to look at faces as first act of an interaction with another human being or any other animal is an evolutionary trait and an innate survival skill deeply rooted in human behavior. A quick glimpse to a face or muzzle gives you a huge amount of conscious and unconscious information about the attitude and intentions of a potential danger or opportunity, and our brain puts this scanning process in motion as soon as something even remotely similar to a face enters in our field of view. During this assessing process, 90% of our attention converges on the eyes, because of their natural tendency to reveal thoughts and the vectors of attention and intentions. Being aware of this behavior is extremely useful when painting any kind of anthropomorphic figure, because you can get away with huge mistakes in every part of a model, but mess even a little with the face or the eyes and even your mom will tell you that the paint job is crap. Every beginner and a lot of advanced painters are in trouble when it comes to place the iris in a believable and or meaningful position. Depending on the scale of the model you need more or less details to sell the illusion, but the rules of placing the iris are the same even in the smallest gaming model. Symmetry is the first thing you have to look for, and to help you with this you can use as reference the oral commissures, the line where the upper and lower lips meet. Looking directly in front of you at the line of the horizon, the center of the pupil is always more or less on the same line of the commissure. This is incredibly useful for gaming models, where this kind of simple universal look works well under every condition, always selling the idea of the figure looking to an enemy or to an objective nearby. Here is a trick that helped me immensely in understanding and even more planning the position of the iris in more detailed, complex or simply larger models. I could have used Photoshop, but nothing beats the power of futuristic animatronic technology. <laughs> ok, it might seem silly, but with this trick you can quickly simulate and study every possible position of the iris, and you can easily create custom versions for the specific model you're working on, having always the perfect visual reference to follow. An important thing you must understand is that, excluding states of extreme surprise or terror when the eyelids are widely open, the full iris is never visible. Angle and position don't make a huge difference, and usually only 60-80% of the iris is actually visible. For a more natural look, use the bottom lid as anchor for the iris. You can use the upper lid as a base if the model is really bored or looking up, but most of the time our sight is on the line of the horizon or below, and when you paint something looking up without a context, it always seems in some kind of chemical or religious trip. Every position tells a precise story and delivers a load of interesting information, so don't be afraid to experiment with different, even extreme angles, because nothing can be more boring and empty of drama and pathos than a simple straight look in the middle. This is the kind of look I want for my bust. The concept is about a low level adventurer of Mordheim, finding a warpstone nugget on the floor and looking down in a mix of surprise and greed. My precious. The model and the face are in a sketching stage, and I still have a lot to do, but even in this uh, preliminary phase I really feel the need of painting the eyes, to add the spark of life and to create the base of the final general expression, because angle and intensity of expression lines, wrinkles and eyebrows all depend on this. I start the work painting the sclera. Never, never use pure white to paint the sclera. As you can see here it's extremely unnatural, and from a technical point of view, even in a comic book style if you use white on the sclera, you'll spoil its role in creating reflections, as we'll see later. 
you can use a cold or warm greys, and as a rule of thumb, a value close to the lightest tones of the skin. In children, the sclera is thinner and shows some of the underlying pigment, appearing slightly blue. In the elderly, fatty deposits can make it appear slightly yellow, while darker skins can have a naturally darker sclera because of a higher concentration of melanin. Simply check pictures of real people and you'll immediately get all the information you need. Here I'm going with the old man idea and a bit of unhealthy inflammation using a set of light skin tones. The most important part of painting the sclera is to create the illusion of its depth and the spherical shape of the eyeball. The third dimension is well sculpted and easy to enhance with paint in this big protruding eye, but usually you have to almost totally fake it, using darker tones in the sides and lighter tones where the main light hits the wet eyeball. Then I move to the iris. In larger models I usually start from black, to create a more defined, dark external rim, but in this uh, small bust I can simply use a darker version of my main tone to obtain the same effect, and maximize the visual impact of the color in the small surface. Thanks to the experiments on animatronic Marco, I perfectly know where to place the iris, and I immediately anchor its center to the lower eyelid. I start with the dot, and I move from its center with a spiral motion that helps me maintaining a perfectly centered circular shape. The brush is made for this kind of motion, so trust the feedback from the bristles and their natural tendency of creating circles when you apply pressure. With the basic shape and its border in place, it's just a matter of adding a couple of circular highlights moving towards the center. I'm looking for a superman kind of blue eye, to use it as ascent in a triadic scheme with the yellow and the red eye set on the figure. The beautiful light blue will also create an interesting contrast with the general creepy look of the character. The pupil is just a simple black dot in the middle. Well, not so simple. To have the space for adjustments and to create a good circular shape, I use uh, multiple dots of transparent paint. None of these brush strokes can ruin what I have in place by itself, but layered all together they create a perfectly solid opaque dot. When I talk about eyes I don't mean only the sphere of the eyeball, but also its relation with the eyelids, and extremely important for the whole expression, the eyebrows. I use a dark brown mixed with black to frame the upper part of the eyeball, creating the depth and the thin shadow projected by the upper lid. And I use a deep saturated red for the thickness of the lower eyelid. The two rims are crazily vascularized, and the blood vessels are easily visible on the surface, with all the red of the blood they contain. The lower lid naturally catches more light and has an angle that faces the viewer, so using a powerful red is not a problem. In this model in particular I can abuse a bit of the red, to create with glazes a strong inflammation around the borders. And I use a thicker paint to create the sensation of the net of capillaries around the margins, using fine lines and a stippling motion. This guy loves wine and doesn't care about his blood pressure. I close the work on the eyeball with a couple of dots of pure white to create the illusion of the reflection on its uh, wet surface. The dots are placed with a precise and scientific logic. I place one dot on the tangent point with the main light. The reflection on the spherical shape of the eye is not always in the same place, and it depends on the angle of the environmental light and how it hits the surface. Also, its size and shape depend on the intensity and shape of the light source. 
When you see a video of creators using a ring light, you see a ring reflection in their eyes, perfectly in the middle, because they have the light in front of them. Or at the beginning of my videos you can see my big rectangular light reflected in my glasses and eyes. I place the second dot always in the same place, on top of the lacrimal duct, to simulate its shiny wet surface. This reflection depends on the position of the viewer in front of the face, so it's always more stable in its placement. This is basically like painting no metallic metal. Depending on your personal taste, you can play a bit more with the finish of the eyeball, using a gloss varnish to add a more obvious sensation of moisture. But remember that uh, this is an extra option, not something that can substitute the white dots and a good rendering of the volumes. Tamiya Clear is a great option if you need the heavy shiny coat of a thick layer of tears, for example. A more liquid water-based varnish is good for a very discreet satin finish, able to add that extra something without really changing your paint job. Recently I also discovered this enamel product, that's absolutely amazing in creating a super realistic sensation of a film of water. Still, it's very powerful in its glossiness, so here I apply only a thin coat of the water-based varnish, more to uniform the finish of the different paints I used, and to separate the eyeball from the skin and its finish. I waited to be in a more advanced stage of smoothing the sketch, to apply the eyebrows on top of a more refined skin. I always use very transparent paint for these steps, to minimize the power of a single brush stroke of screwing up things. I start with the line to define the basic shape of the arc. The arc contains the whole expression, so it's better to set it in place and refine its shape from the very beginning. And I use short, thin lines to paint the hairy texture of the bushy eyebrows. I take my time with this step, and I build the texture with multiple transparent passes, alternating lighter and darker tones. The eyebrows are an integral part of painting the eyes, and an essential step to create a complete facial expression. 99% of the times eyebrows are not sculpted. In display figures this is meant to give you the freedom to create the expression you want, and on miniatures is often a scale issue, but this is not an excuse to skip this step even on gaming models. This is something our brain needs to see, and if you take away the eyebrows even a beautiful face becomes super creepy, and I've seen too many creepy space marines without eyebrows. And here is the final result. Female eyes have obviously the same anatomy and need the exact same steps. The only difference is that the end of the process I showed you is at the beginning of the huge and complex chapter of makeup. This topic needs a video of its own, because makeup is difficult and kicks my ass in a way or another every single time. So I want to close saying to all the women watching this video that I have a huge admiration and respect for your painting skills, and I can't wait to read your comments when I'll make a mess with makeup. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment, and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support the channel and my work, check my Patreon page and join the community, or maybe ask for a commission. See you next week, guys!